Hi there. Well, welcome back to uh, Petrophysics Rocks, my new YouTube channel. As you may know, I've been sort of moving my old uh, presentations from my uh, from my website um, onto this new YouTube channel, uh, such that uh, YouTube can cur curate the the movies for me here. Um, this presentation uh, was given to the SPWLA in 2018. It's slightly different from my usual ones in that it's not appeared on my uh, my own website before. Uh, so in that sense, it's kind of a bit original, uh, but it has been uh, presented and it's in the public domain uh, since about 2018. It represents the results of a well that we uh, that we drilled in um, uh, 2015, I think. Uh, there's been a lot of interest down the years uh, in in the oil reserves or resources of, of the Falklands and the Falklands Basin. I'm obviously not going to comment on any of the uh, of the politics of the area, but uh, even so, for a, from a ge geotechnical perspective and an oil industry perspective, there has been some uh, a lot of interest uh, down the years. And so I thought that uh, I would put this uh, this presentation up and uh, and show you what the the geology of the Falklands looks like and. Uh, what really great reservoirs there are down there, actually. Uh, the fluid's a little bit tricky. It's, uh, it's a bit waxy, so you have to go to that extra mile uh, to keep it warm enough to flow and all that kind of good stuff. Um, but nevertheless, there's, there are quite a few resources down there. And as when I was at uh, Premier Oil, we were involved in, uh, there's, a, there's a field discovered down there called Sea Lion. Um, and uh, uh, the, the issue with sea lion is, apart from the fact it's, it's quite a large oil field by all accounts, but it's, uh, it's in the Falklands, so it's, uh, it's a long way away from anywhere, from markets and things like that. And so that's been the, the commercial challenge, uh, along with some of the, the political issues that went on there. But from a purely technical point of view, I thought I'd show you some of the rocks here um, and, uh, and how pretty they are and how nice they are. Now, this particular... This particular oil well um, we drilled was not part of the sea lion uh, complex. It was a um, uh, an exploration well that that uh, that Premier uh, drilled uh, standalone, if you like, trying to look for for more hydrocarbons in the area, and uh, and it was successful. Um, so without further ado, I'll just um, uh, present you um, pass you on to the. Um, to this uh, this presentation, uh, which as I say, given SBWLA, um, and I hope you enjoy it. Uh, if you'd like to remember, just if you could subscribe um, and maybe offer some comments down below, as I say, that that'd always be appreciated. And uh, and I'll try and answer whatever questions I can uh, technically uh, on this data set. Okay, thank you very much uh, for your attention. Cheers. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to share with you the results of an integrated formation evaluation study that we carried out on a well exploration well we drilled in the Falkland Islands in 2015. I'd like to thank my co-authors Rob Newbold and Aldo Lopez at Premier Royal and all the guys at Halliburton for making this talk possible. What I'm going to discuss this afternoon is an introduction to the North Falkland Basin and the Sea Lion Field, and more specifically the results from the 1415B5 Zebedee Exploration Well. I'm going to discuss the formation evaluation objectives and share with you some results including image log fasces recognition, some fasces properties and the impact that this has on the evaluation. Then hopefully I'm going to draw some conclusions. Okay, just to give you some background on the North Falkland Basin and the sea lion area history, uh, back in the 90s seismic was acquired and six exploration wells were drilled. Unfortunately no commercial hydrocarbons were discovered. Rockhopper and Desire uh, were awarded blocks in the early noughties and they worked up the prospects in the area and this culminated in the discovery of the sea lion field in 2010 and uh, Casper in 2011. Premier Oil then farmed in in 2012 and we'll be discussing the results of some of the uh, exploration campaign led by Premier in 2015 where we drilled the Zebedee and Isabel discoveries.
The Phase 1 Sea Lion project itself is currently in the define phase, going through front-end engineering design, and we hope to move the project to sanction uh, in the early part of next year. Here we are in the uh, North Falkland Basin, some uh, 220 uh, kilometers north of the Falkland Islands themselves, part of the South American plate on the Falkland Plateau, in a water depth of around 450 meters, so not too deep. The main graben of the North Northern Rift Basin is about uh, 150 kilometers long and uh, 50 kilometers uh, wide. Um, and uh, it is an early failed rift related to the breakup of uh, Gondwana and the opening up of the Atlantic Ocean. The inset uh, shows the sea lion field itself and I've highlighted the Zebedee and Isabel exploration wells. Today we'll be talking about the results from the uh, Zebedee well in the uh, southern part of the main sea lion area. As far as the geology of the region is concerned, there are potential reservoirs throughout the rift sequence. The basin is filled with Cretaceous and Tertiary clastics, and there are no real complex uh, lithologies here like carbonates or evaporites. We're primarily interested in the early post-rift lacustrine turbidite sandstones and the organic-rich high TOC shales which provide world-class source rock. These lacustrine Turbidite sandstones are fed in through canyons and feeder channels on the shelf area in the east and they form deep water fans. Hydrocarbon accumulations are found in multiple fans, many of which overlap. You will see in the nomenclature that we have subdivided the lacustrine sequence into uh, three main units, the F1, F2 and F3 and the majority of hydrocarbon discovered to date have been in the F2 and F3 sands, but there are potential reservoirs throughout the sequence. So, this is the uh, Zebedee well opportunity uh, in the south of the sea lion area. This is another large fan uh, outlined in green, targeting an oil in place of between 400 to 500 million barrels. So a very significant hydrocarbon accumulation potentially. You can see on the map the configuration of a number of these overlapping fans and you can also pick these up in the seismic section. Here I'm showing the uh, el extended elastic impedance volume where the seismic anomaly picks out the Zebedee uh, fan and a number of other uh, sand bodies at multiple uh, levels quite well. So moving on to the specific well objectives, as I said the primary objective of the well was to extend the sea line discovered resource further to the south. Uh, with the primary target in the Zebedee fan, uh, from which the well derives its name. However, we also had secondary targets in the F1 and F2, and a number of fans in the F3. We were to core the primary reservoir target, and uh, rotary side will core all the secondary targets. Obviously, the key was to acquire pressure data and representative fluid samples so that we could determine the connectivity to the main sea lion field. So to achieve these objectives in this remote location, we were campaign drilling. We had to load everything we needed uh, onto the boat in Aberdeen and sail things down to the Southern Ocean. And we had uh, um, regular fixed wing charter flights to bring in and out the personnel. Good satellite data communications was obviously key in connecting the team in London, and myself in uh, Aberdeen and the Halliburton guys in Houston. Uh, so that we could monitor and support the operation real-time. Uh, this worked really well. So here are the results from the well. Here I'm focusing in on the three hydrocarbon bearing intervals discovered in the well. The uh, Hector fan, which is uh, gas bearing, the Ninki and Zebedee uh, oil fans. We recorded this LWD gamma ray resistivity. We took uh, 53 meters of core. Um, the first uh, quad combo Wireline run was a dense neutron sonic lateral log. We ran the uh, Emeril XL NMR tool and we got borehole images with the uh, XRMI. We took an RDT uh, pressure and sampling program. As I said, we, mentioned we uh, took the rotary sidewall cores and some borehole seismic. The petrophysical results were in line with our expectation. Pretty good net to grow, 70 to 95 percent good porosities between 20 and 25 percent and reasonable water saturations of around 20 to 25 percent. 
The shale content in these reservoirs is typically low um, and generally less than 10%. Zooming into the Zebedee sand so that you can see the logs a little bit more clearly, you will see that we have good hull conditions and generally good log quality. We have a nice permeable invasion profile, which I've shaded in here yellow between the, uh, the MSFL and the uh, deep lateral log. We have a good solid formation pressure with very little deviation on it, uh, and it is indeed coincident with the rest of the sea line system. Image quality is excellent. Zooming in further to the image log, we can see some features that we can begin to relate to rock quality. Here I'm showing the uh, NMR as a VDL display looking down upon the raw echoes. When we have a good porous signal with all the protons aligned and resonating, we get these nice big uh, red flame signals which gradually uh, decay away towards the right of the track. The bigger and the better the pore system, the longer lasting the flames are before they de decay away. In non-porous shale intervals, we have uh, we don't generate a big porosity signal, and the VDL stays blue throughout. So if we look at the NMR display, we can see that the good NMR signal is perhaps um, associated with the more massively bedded units, and the medium to uh, poor NMR. Uh, intervals signal is perhaps associated with the more laminated and cemented fasces. Now, the deep water geoscience team at Halliburton also had a look at the image log as soon as it became available from the rig site, and they were able to turn around a quick look image interpretation, and they identified a number of key fasces. The first fasces they noted was fasces A, which are coupled debrites or coarse tail graded basal lags and these are the poorest fasces we see. Here in this porosity histogram you can see that uh, typically porosity is down around about 10%. Here also you can see water saturation in a buckles plot relationship where with increasing porosity we would expect the water saturation to decrease as reservoir quality improves but in this case it doesn't really get much below 45% water saturation. If we compare this to fasces B, which are clean, very fine to fine-grained, well-sorted sands, which is in fact the best fasces we encounter, with an average porosity of 24%, well, you will note that there's a significant bimodal portion that is up around about 30% porosity. And these sands develop good water saturation down to around about 19 saturation units. Fasces C which are fine-grained sandstones with minor clay content, are also pretty good quality fasces with an average porosity of around about 20% and a irreducible water saturation down around about 24%. Fasces D, which are thin to very thinly bedded or laminated fine, very fine-grained sandstones, are also poor quality fasces, where the porosity is on average down at about 15%, and the irreducible water saturations are up at around about uh, 32%. Now these fasces seem reasonably clear on the borehole in images, although the boundaries between them of course may be somewhat interpretational. But once the core was available to us, and I should say that at the time uh, the core was cut, it was sealed away and put on a boat, and so wasn't available at the time of the operation, but we can now cross-check these observations and ground truth these image log fasces against the core and we generally see a pretty reasonable agreement with the best fasces B having the highest uh, porosity um, and permeability 27 PU and 360 millidarcies in this example and the poorest fasces A uh, down at uh, 3 PU and less than 0 0.001 millidarcies Taken together, we can see that fasces B and C develop the best irreducible water saturations. These observations seem to hold true um, at the core plug scale too. Here is a CT scan of a plug showing a nice set of laminations in this fasces D plug, whereas fasces B appears to be more massive. However, these geological observations are all very well, but the key question is whether the permeability contrast noted between the um, fasces are significant when it comes to static and dynamic modelling. This is permeability on a linear scale, 
and uh, we see permeability contrast between 500 millidarcies and 100 millidarcies. I'm not going to say whether this is uh, significant today. It's more a question about recognizing that this contrast exists in the first place. Having made those qualitative observations earlier on with regard to NMR quality and the image fasces relationships, we were looking for a way of tying them together in a more quantitative way. By using the ratio of free fluid, which is dominant in good reservoir quality rock, to bound fluid, which is dominant in the poor reservoir quality rock, we can develop a continuous rock quality index from NMR. Since rock quality index, or RQI, is proportional to FFI to BVI ratio, we can also consider this the square root of permeability to porosity. The higher the signal, the better the quality, the reservoir quality. And you could imagine that there might be some cut-off value below which it might be difficult to obtain net reservoir pressures, for example. If we look at the reservoir pressures we did take, uh, we can see that in the good fasces, uh, B and C, uh, generally we can obtain mobilities and formation pressures at RQIs generally greater than about 1. Although in some cases, in the best fasces, uh, we can obtain uh, um, mobilities in, in RQIs of less than 1. However, in poor fasces, uh, A and D, we can see that uh, we generally need, seem to need to be above 1 uh, RQI is greater than 1 to obtain mobilities and pressures. Now in, in, in the Parker F3 uh, sand we still seem to uh, have good image fasces and RQI is greater than 1 and yet we still only get uh, low mobility permeability tests. So we believe that the F3 sand seems to be a different poroperm fabric at this location. So, it is the combination and integration of both Fasci's definitions and NMR RQI that need to be considered. So, no single measure of provides the whole solution, which is obviously typical of most things petrophysical. If we look at the mobilities versus log porosity by fluid leg, we can see that the gas points typically have the highest uh, mobilities, and the water points typically have the lowest mobilities. And we can also see that in the lower F3 water-bearing sands, they show more evidence of supercharging, and it's more difficult to establish a reliable aquifer gradient. If we look at the uh, same plot colored, coded by uh, fasces, we note that the, um, most of the better mobilities are found in fasces B, and the poorer mobilities are found in fasces D, as expected. But uh, F fasci C can occur in both regions, and therefore it may prove difficult to distinguish on the basis of mobility alone. So in conclusion, we've uh, used an integrated workflow with a combination of conventional image and NMR logs to optimize our pressure point selection and fluid sampling program. Hopefully these insights allow us to minimize the number of tight tests required to explore the economic floor of productivity, which obviously is still of interest to me as a petrophysicist, but I guess you have to keep the drillers a little bit happy. We've seen that any RQI cutoff is perhaps um, potentially varies by fasces. Obtaining good pressure readings at lower RQIs in better fasces and requiring higher RQIs in poorer fasces. The difference in properties between the two best fasces is not readily visibly observed in core and has not been used in our current subsurface modeling to date. However, these operational insights and observations may be used in future investigation and characterization to see if the contrast in permeability fabrics is significant for fluid flow. We would like to thank and uh, acknowledge our joint venture partners, Rockhopper Exploration, for their cooperation and permission to publish this paper. And with that, I'll finish and invite questions. Uh, thank you for your attention.